how do I go forward and like advice a person my age using the leverage of my credit to move on and keep keep going forward in life? You know what I mean? Does that make well, sense? Well, find out what you're passionate about. Um, it's okay to take some risk, mm -hmm. but take a calculated risk, something that you know you, that you've done some research. Okay, um, capital could be a great thing. You know, money is a could be a uh, could be a blessing, but could also be a curse. So you know, got to be careful with what you're doing and who you're doing it with. Mm. You know, because um, you get caught up in stuff. You know, I'm, I'm I'm using this money, but this is what it's doing, and you know, maybe it's something that's a little colorful that you really shouldn't be involved with, but it's equitable. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure at the end of the day, you're doing the right thing and that you're associating yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. And that's everything. I met a guy years ago. Find your tribe. It's kind of funny. He, um, you know, when I go to the auctions to buy cars, I'm the guy, I can buy anything I want. It don't matter what it is. And I raise my hand and as a professional courtesy, a lot of people, when they see me bidding, they won't bid against me because they know I'm going to end up with it anyway. So why do that? And if I see them doing that, there's something about body language when you're at an auction. So for instance, the car is going through the lane and, you know, you see a guy bidding on it and he's real, you know, he, he wants the car, he's raising his hand, he's winking, he's doing whatever he needs to do. Right. So well, what would happen is... Um, uh, if I wanted something, you know, I'm going to buy it. But then sometimes guys would get pissed off. Like, oh, this guy's buying everything. I get like, I don't know if it's jealous or whatever. Well, then you can tell if somebody starts to rock back and forth, you probably got one more bid they're going to get. Mm. And so, but me, I'm cool on the other side of the pillow. Like, you yeah. don't know what I'm going to do. From start to I may finish, be bidding, yeah. all of a sudden I'm ghost. They're like, where'd he go? <laughs> yeah. So a couple of times I go to the auctions, people will be bidding against me. I know they didn't want this car. They probably couldn't even afford it, but they're bidding against me because they're fucking with me. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so they bid against me. Next thing you know, I would see what's going on. And boom, I'm gone. They're they like, oh a, shit, where'd he go? So they took to the other guy. Then they would come over to me and say, hey, hey excuse me. Say, hey, hey, did you need that? I, no, bro, you needed it more than I did. Mm. No, no, no. They usually work for somebody. I own my store, so I, we all have to answer to somebody. Mm -hmm. But they got to answer to the owner. Why did you just buy this dumbass car and pay all this money for you? are in trouble. They might lose their job. Right. Me, okay, that was a dumb thing I did. So this one particular time, there was this guy who was just like me. We could buy whatever. We used to go at it, like because mm -hmm. it was like, I got this. Like you know, I'm stronger than you. I right, could whatever. Right, right. We go at it, go at it. Next thing you know, uh, one day we came together and we said, bro, why are we doing this? We're making somebody a lot of money. You know, why don't we just, if you really want it, you take it. If I need it, you know, let me have it. Like, yeah. We'll work together. So <laughs> we, we decided to do that one day. And then we went to lunch, got to know him a little bit, father and son combination. Well, this one day I get to the auction and the uh, I'm buying everything. And I see the dad, he's like, he's sleeping. Like, he's just not on his job, right? So I look over at the son. He's over in the cut. He's like all upset. I go, hey, what's going on? He goes, this is my dad. He goes, man, he goes, I think he's having a medical emergency. Every time I try to talk to him, he's yelling at me. And I was like, really? So I walk up to him and I go, bro, what's up? So he was like, hey, what up? He was just like, he was out of it. So I said, oh, fuck. I said, bro, go get your car, pull it around. We're taking him to the doctor right now. So mm -hmm. I pick up this little dude, this little guy, a little carnival looking motherfucker. <laughs> so I pick him up. I, we, we get him in the car. The officer knows I'm a good person. I'm not going, I'm not trying to. Right. And I got his son with me. So we get him in the car. We take him to the hospital. He gets there. And sure enough, he had a controlled substance in his system. And it was something that you're not supposed to do casually. I don't know if it was oxy. It was something that you just don't do. I mean, right. you have access to it, but you don't, you know, yeah, too much of anything is not good. Right. So they, he was taking too much of whatever it was. And so they got it sorted out and got him the right regimen of what he needed. So in the meantime, I was like, how did he get that shit? And they're like, oh, one of his managers at one of his dealerships is giving it to him. I go, really? So I pick up the phone and I go, what's his name? So I call a guy up and I say, hey, listen, uh, you know, this is Mr. Waterford. I said, hey, you know, um, I'm here in the hospital mm -hmm. and I'm with my really good friend. And I just want to let you know something. If anything happens to him, I said, you're going to have a really bad day. Mm. And he was like, yeah. what? And I, he goes, are you threatening me? And I said, I'm letting you know. I will fuck you up. If mm -hmm. something happens to him, I'm like, the same thing that happens to him is going to happen to you. Yeah. I just want you to know that. So his son's like, oh, no, this guy's a crazy guy. I'm crazy, too. Like, you yeah. might not know that. Like, I'm crazy <laughs> I'm as crazy fuck. I'm crazy, too. So I'm like, you know, so then it got to the point where we, it, it, I felt like in the movie Scarface where he's yelling at somebody and the phone's flipping up. I was so heated. I hung up the phone. I said, hey, where is this damn dealership? I'm going to fly in there. I'm going to knock his ass out. I'm going to get back on the plane and I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, unfortunately for him, I had to fly into an area and then I had to drive two hours. And it was mm -hmm. just like, too so they, he got a pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, through the grace of God, my friend got through this challenge that he was going through. So about a year later, he calls me up. He's like, man, I really need you to come out here. I'm kind of going through stuff. I'm like, bro, what do you need? So I get out there and I'm like, what's up? So he says, 
man, he goes, you know, I got millions. I got millions. I go, okay, I, I get it. Like, so do I, mm-hmm. motherfucker. Like, what's up? <laughs> he's like, well, no. He goes, you know, this money, it could really be, I have a son and he's my only successor. And this money could be a blessing, but it could really be a curse. He goes, I want to make you the executor of my estate. I go, what the fuck? What go, the Dude, f- I can't do that shit. I go, you may fuck around and come up short. I'm from Chicago. Like, why do you want me to do that? He goes, right. nope. He goes, you know, integrity is something that's measured when no one else is looking. And I see how you roll. I've seen you when nobody's looking, how you act. It's no different. Like you, who you say you are. And he goes, and I trust you, and I'm not having it in any way. And I was like, bro, I tried my best to talk him out of this shit. Because mm. I'm not that smart. I don't know how to manage right. like millions like that. Yeah. When I say man, he's got probably $100 million or better. <laughs> and he wants me to oversee that. God forbid if something happens to him. So... 